Hey, what's up guys, it's Oakley, and I'm going to be playing with some more High Elves, returning with the Star and Sword build that I had shown you previously. Two battles today are going to be myself against different uh, Skaven opponents, uh, so we'll see how this uh, plays out. But the Star and Sword build is named thusly because you have uh, Prince on a Star Dragon, and then the Sword is going to be the Sword Masters of Hoeth, so I have four of those. So very small numbers, I mean you can see I have 339 men against my opponents, 1700. So the main crux of this build is while the sword masters are going to be here to just charge into whatever enemy infantry uh, is available and really run them down and do a lot of damage, the dragon princes are here to rebuff monsters or things that might do big damage. So basically you're anti-large and they can even run down uh, range units and others, but mostly they're going to be trying to protect these guys as they close. Uh, the lore master of Hoeth coming into the back has a couple spells that I have on him, Harmonic Converges, to try and buff up my units as well as, um, I believe, uh, Regrowth to help top off some of my elite units. Uh, and then the two units here are going to be mounted and they're essentially going to be your Lord Sniping uh, Quick Reaction Forces. So the Prince here uh, does have a lot of abilities stacked on top of him to allow him to really do burst damage. Uh, and then he does have an accompanying uh, Noble on an Eagle. Uh, this is just to provide aerial protection. In the case of Fighting Skaven, it's not that important, but I did want some Noble, or sorry, uh, uh, Mobile Lords. Uh, very rapidly to get around the battlefield so in case you know he gets focused by lightning cannons I can come in here and with the noble sneak around and maybe snipe at some of these uh, artillery pieces so let's go ahead and see what my opponent has he looks like he was rather prepared for going against the high elves here so what he does have is rather formidable so a warp lightning cannon already gonna start to snipe at dragon princes bring them really low on health then he has a huge mass of clan rats just a lot of fodder to throw at me he has a uh, skaven assassin here to have uh, debuffs on me with the rival hide talisman and headhunt he has um, a grace here with ruin uh, so that can do a lot of damage to my guys he has death glow bombardiers a lot of anti-infantry so tons of stuff uh, to just tie me down and then if that weren't bad enough he has two of these doom wheels which can shred my infantry line so here's what we're going to be doing. The main plan is going to be to neutralize the Warp Lightning Cannon. So I dive in with my Noble just to tie down the forces here. And with my uh, surrounding Prince, all he has to do is pivot around. And he's going to start to get some uh, Flame Strikes on. What's happening over here is as the Doom Wheels are going to chase me off and come in and you can see... Uh, you know, he really wants to get after my infantry, already starting to do some damage uh, with just uh, some preliminary strikes, shooting out the, the flanks of those. So pretty good. I mean, he could just circle around my infantry. So what I'm going to have to do is rebuff those. So Swordmaster, or Lore Master, I should say, of Hoeth is going to stand strong while the remainder retreat past him. So as a single entity with a fair amount of health, he can hopefully tie those down. Meanwhile, the rest of the Dragon Princes are going to come here and rebuff this. And then I'm just going to sweep around with these Swordmasters and get in here. Now here is going to be my Prince with a huge blast focus fire down on these guys. And that is going to absolutely route this. Uh, let's get a, a shot here. There you go, that's going to absolutely route and negate this Warp Lightning Cannon. So there you go, out of commission. And with my Rapid Lords, I can just get on out of here. So here you have it. Both Doom Wheels have been tied down. They're going to pull through with their Lightning Shots to do some damage. But over on the side, all these Skaven Slave Spears are going to start to melt. melt. And this is the, the point where it starts to get scary for your opponent. The second these Sword Masters... Oh, this is a good view. Sword Masters, the Sword and Star, or Star and Sword, are going to get into the mix of Skaven. And all across the battlefield are going to be running them down. Now, what is the next kind of uh, thing that I have to be worried about? Well, he could do a fair amount of damage to me with these Death Glow Bombardiers and his Grace here. So this is again where I'm going to be popping uh, my Noble. Quick Reaction Force to suppress these Death Glow Bombardiers. Really distract them from firing into my Sword Masters. And the Sword Masters, I don't even have to worry about these guys. They're essentially point and click. Such good health, such good stats. Anti-infantry, armor piercing, and armored. Nothing in the Skaven roster here thus far that's committed to me is going to be able to do very much. Uh, so I can, like I said, just point and click and let them do their stuff and they're routing absolutely everything uh, and yeah this warp lightning cannon looks like it's still up I'm not quite sure where the crew's at okay looks like it's still routing so I'm still good so yeah the, ne the next thing will be to go for the uh, the serpent's head which gonna, is going to be this grace here that's exactly what your lord's going to do so nothing much can oppose him so I'm going to be circling around And here he comes, pivoting. 
Ooh, gonna get pretty devastating strike off at that. So decent amount of damage. My uh, Lore Master of Hoath is also in here. I'm gonna swap out. Send over my Noble after some of these spears to help break them. And then come in here with the Prince Blade of Belcoradris. All deadly onslaught. So take a look at his stats. Huge amount of stuff. Rival Head Talisman was popped, which is the benefit of having the Assassin nearby. It tries to negate it, but nonetheless, it's not going to be able to take this out. Look how much damage I'm doing to this Grace here. Meanwhile, you know, despite this distraction, yeah, he's getting on a lot of spells. I do dodge a little one. And so, this Prince is not only a damage dealer, but also a huge distraction. Because uh, while he's focusing all his energy here, my Sword Masters, the sword part of the Sword and Star, is doing work. It looks like the uh, the Doom Whales that were over in the back finally were you know were able to see off my Dragon Princes who were committed. Uh, now I'm going to be stacking the the Noble against them, which he probably won't win, but it's enough again to keep them distracted. And then another huge Breath spell does somewhat whiff on the Grace here, but I'm definitely keeping him running. And now I'm going to come up in pursuit and still these guys at very solid health. Lore Master, stand your ground, being popped, all kinds of stuff. Oh man, all kinds of damage, but I'm going, like I said, for the head of the snake here. If we can cut it off, uh, that will undoubtedly be a victory for us, and the rest of the Skaven Horde will rout in terror. And there you go, so we've got the route. He's down to 323 health, I'm a little bit distracted, not able to come in, but... Uh, I should be able to catch up. Yeah, it looks like the, the Doom Wheel and the Assassin, everyone's trying to get after me. And here's the final lunge. Boom. Gonna take that guy out. Ooh, man, he just snapped up that nearby Skaven. So with that, that is gonna eliminate the rest of the uh, resistance. Lots of routing going across the board for all kinds of Skaven units. And then if that were enough, we're actually gonna have... Oh, sorry, I, was, I think I was saying Lifeblood earlier. It's Earthblood. Gonna be replenishing the HP on my combat... On my units. And these <laughs> great... Or, sorry, Swordmasters are just gonna wreck everything. And then, just for, for good measure, I'm gonna come back and hit um, the, the Doom Whale. So let's end the replay. And take a look at some of the stats on my guys. <laughs> so, I mean, like I was saying, these Swordmasters of Hoth are always a good choice against Skaven. So only 348 men deployed, lost a third of them, uh, but still did so much damage. All of it owed to the Swordmasters. And the Dragon Princes here didn't really do too much in terms of kills. But again, they are not really your main killing power. That's going to be the Swordmasters. The Dragon Princes are there to... Um, Basically shut down enemy counters, so in this case two Doom Wheels could probably take out, you know, half of my Sword Masters pretty easily. But Dragon Princes were effectively able to counter those. And then my Flying Lords, you thought, saw there early on, just came in, prioritized this Warp Lightning Cannon, which could have easily focused on my small build. That's one of the things of bringing 348 men. Mass Artillery Barrages can take you out, so you gotta worry about that. So the Quick Reaction Mobility there effectively sniped that, and even though he had um, Storm Vermin with Halberds basically sitting on top in a bunch of spears, there's really not much he could do against a perfectly placed Breath Spell uh, and then an incoming uh, Strike, so you can neutralize one of those pretty easily, and then the rest, I mean, was pretty much fodder. So that's it for this one. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the other Skaven Battle that I had again with this build, uh, and it'll play out somewhat different, so stay tuned for that. All right, we are back in it. So again, same build for me: four of the Lord Masters of our Sword Masters of Hoth, with a Lord Master of Hoth in the center, one Dragon Prince, and yeah, the Noble and the uh, the Prince on the Star Dragon. Uh, so against this Skaven opponent, he's kind of this is a different one than before, but it's a slightly different build, different approach. None of the Doom Wheels that my other opponent was taking uh, against me, and this is a pretty good one against um, the High Elves. So what he has is again. A mix of, you know, cheap Skaven Slaves, Clan Rats, a lot of fodder units with a fair amount of uh, Clan Rats or Spears and Shields and Halberds. So he's expecting like a Dragon Prince um, and even some of those uh, Illyrian Riders to come in and hit him from all sides. So he's prepared for that. In the rear lines, he also has three of these Rat Ogres and Lord Skrulk, which you'll be seeing brought a lot. So this is a pretty good idea. So, okay, he can come up against me. If I commit with my Swordmasters of Hoth, I'm pretty sure I can chew through all this, but now is going to be the question. 
you know, can I make it in close a distance against these guys? In the previous battle, the main thing that was keeping me from doing that was two Doom Wheels and a Lightning Cannon. Um, to get rid of the Lightning Cannon, I came over with my guys and tried to take them out. And that worked. And to take care of the uh, Doom Wheel, what I did is I came and hit them with the Dragon Princes. In this case, what my opponent has brought to prevent me from closing the distance is going to be four of these uh, Gutter Runners with Poison each. And this is going to be very, very hard for me. This is going to be a good uh, choice for my opponent. Uh, with four of these guys, they all have poison, they all have the snare nets, which means anything I throw after them uh, is going to be slowed and probably never be able to catch up to them. So I'm really debating, you know, how do I close the distance here? He has a force that's far enough away that I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can sandwich on these. I'm going to feint to retreat and then do an about face and throw everything at them. And we'll see how this goes. Here come my dudes chasing. But these forces are very, the gutter runners are very, very quick. So I'm coming at him from multiple angles. Dragon Prince is also. I'm trying to come in. But look at that. All those ninja stars thrown to the face, poisoning him. And he's already dropping health pretty precipitously. I'm finally starting to get in, but you can see the speed there dropped to 46, and it looks like uh, I'm just not going to be close enough uh, to do damage. I do catch a single one of them, but already having dropped to half health, meanwhile the rest of the army is closing in. Uh, so this is a real problem for me. I'm a little scared. Uh, all of a sudden the defense that I had against things like rat ogres are just not there, so I'm in real trouble. Luckily I do get in with my prince, and that is going to stall enough to get my dragon princes in here, so I'm going to somewhat claim the prize of taking out these forces. I'm just going to have to be satisfied with a partial route on some of them. The rest, still two of them, are going to be alive and I can't continue the pursuit there. I'm going to have to fall back to my forest. I figured enough is enough. We've routed two, negated that, and the army is here to play. So I need to get back into the center uh, and get ready to tango. So my guys are going to come back, pull back, prepare for this assault, and then this is going to be back to the the easy stuff that the uh, the elves know how to win. I'm going to, you know, let my opponent come to me now that I've negated some of his range advantage. And now I'm going to just, you know, allow him to do the next play. And meanwhile, if he's just going to throw spears and swords at me, these are battles I'm going to win easily. So there you go. Already slaughtering those guys. And then sit in the back and wait for his actual uh, scary units to come in. So he can throw clan rats with shields at me all day. Harmonic conversions for more melee attack and defense. Just allowing these guys to hold the line against everything. And here he goes. Looks like he's going to be putting the pressure on. So he's going to be doing that with the unit of rat ogres and uh, gutter runners on the flank. See if I can counter this. So here comes the body slamming. That's a little scary. And I'm going to go after, again, the snake's head. If you ever have an opportunity to do this, try and do that. I get a breath spell that pretty much whiffs. Um, but that's okay. I do have Lord Skrulk tied down. Going to be sending reinforcements this way with the Lore Master and getting the Noble in the back to try and uh, debuff that. And then a Sword Master here to try and uh, see these guys off. But I see that it's, uh, you know, there's no point chasing after these guys. As we saw before, it's impossible to catch them uh, without quick dragons and everything coming after them. So I'm just going to commit to this blob and just make sure I can hold and see them off and just try and sustain the damage. Meanwhile, on the other flanks... Uh, Coming in and trying to take out these forces. Yeah, rat ogres can do a fair amount of damage. But with my uh, nearby uh, lord here, it's going to be very hard for him to see me off completely. Oh, this is a cool view. Face to face with Lord Skrulk. Pretty scary place to be. Yeah, Blade of uh, Belkorgis doing a lot of damage against Lord Skrulk. He will probably try and pop Libra Bubonicus against me soon. Oh my god, all kinds of stuff happening here. So Lord Skrulk there is flailing. Uh, so this is a little bit closer fought than in that previous battle. He is really flailing with that magic, trying to sustain himself. Dragon Princes are going to be seeing off, which means that my uh, Prince is going to be all by himself. Uh, Sword Masters are going to be peeled in to try and support. And my other defensive position is over here, where I have Sword Master of Hoeth dropping with all the supporting fire. Um, Dragon Princes are going to be seen off, so my numbers are dropping quite rapidly. 
even my noble has been seen off and now Skaven is getting its second win so things are not looking super good for me if I can't force the enemy mass route then what's going to happen is I'm going to have a ton of units who can just fire away and kite me to death so meanwhile Lord Master is going to try and pop all sorts of ability on my guys keep them uh, from rounding and it looks like my opponent is just now going to start to realize that these guys are coming back I guess he's microing elsewhere but these guys really need to be recommitted to the fight uh, as soon as possible in the center, Earthblood popped on all my guys, and it looks like I was able to focus down uh, Lord Skrulk here. So there you see him prancing off into the distance, and that is going to help uh, force these guys into retreat. I do wonder why my opponent did not commit these forces. I think the replay may be partially corrupted, because what I remember from this replay is he had committed them. So it may have been the case that this is a little bit corrupted, and um, that's why you're seeing some inactivity there, which would have been, you know, pretty obvious. But anyways, um... At this point, I'm going to finish off Lord Skrulk with a big-ass spell right into them. Looks like he dives at the last second, spreading pestilence on the ground. Wipes himself off, uh, but the end is nigh. Looks like my uh, my lord here is going to come back. Oh, no, actually, it looks like my opponent now does realize that there are forces. So finally he's going to commit, but a little bit too little too late. With that, I do kill, body slam the enemy lord, and just as he commits on the last of my sword masters... Panic is going to set into the Skaven ranks. So had he dogpiled a little bit sooner, I think he probably could have turned the tides and maybe kept my guys from doing the critical amounts of damage to Lord Skrulk that I did there in the end. Uh, and he could have dogpiled and pushed my guys who were just teetering on the edge here, probably up over the edge. Um, but uh, it was a close fought affair. I like the play with the gutter runners. And you can see here, a single sword master of Hoth unit that I deployed against them uh, was just shredded in the pursuit. So those are a pretty good counter. Yeah, my guy is finally holding out, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, still didn't quite have a means to destroy this prince. Uh, had he made it into the late game, probably could have kited with these gutter runners uh, forever. And so he really just, I don't know, probably should have focused a little bit more on delaying the battle. Uh, what he did was maybe advance with his army a little bit too preemptively, got too close, and, uh, and then just fed in sword units into my uh, sword masters, which just played to my advantage. I think he was trying to capitalize on the fact that I had dragon princes and other forces on this side uh, that were just, you know, out of position, and he tried to capitalize on that, which is uh, a valid move to make, but what he should have done is just thrown in the rat ogres and p pummeled my front line by throwing in those swords preemptively. That just, uh, it just gave me free kills. So I really like the build that he brought to counteract against me. Probably could have beaten me uh, had he played it a little bit different, uh, but still uh, a good fight. So I do want to show you the final stats here. Um, tons of kills on all my guys. Again, Sword Masters of Hoth carrying the day. Prince doing a good amount of work. And this time Dragon Prince is raking up a couple more kills. But look at the damage done on the other side. It was pretty much all done by these uh, gutter runners with poison. So an ish interesting idea uh, to try and build those into your uh, into your army composition. So I like the way he was thinking. Uh, just a little bit more refinement on the engagement there. But anyways, y'all almost had me. <laughs> so that's it. This is again showing off my uh, the star and sword build, which I definitely recommend. It's a very fun one. Um, easier on the micro in that you don't have that many units, and it's just about you know execution. Uh, again, Dragon Princess to buff, uh, or rebuff, uh, guard your sword masters, allow them to close, and then the remainder of your lords are there to uh, snipe at high priority targets in the event that you're fighting against units or armies that are built around uh, a key lord. Uh, you know, either as the vampires or as Skaven or even the Tomb Kings, that's where you want to send your lord, uh, your prince, and noble combo after. So yeah, that's it for this one, or I guess for the pair of videos. Hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for more. Let me know what kind of unique builds you have on your side, and uh, maybe I can try them out. Uh, give them a test run and then report back on some of that gameplay. So that's it. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.